If this is your first time setting up a FortiGate firewall, then this tutorial will help you. Let's start. All right, so the very first thing that you will probably do is to move to system, adjust several settings. Let's move to settings. You can change your host name. It is preferred that you will change your host name so that you will know when something happens that it comes from that FortiGate. It comes from the network that your FortiGate actually protects. So if you work in the marketing division or the finance division, don't hesitate. Just name your FortiGate according to its position in the organization. The second thing that you will need to do is to set up your NTP server. You can use your FortiGuard as the NTP server. You can also assign an NTP server so your FortiGate will be the NTP server for a specific interface. We will not do that, but you can do so. You will probably keep the administration settings to 443 and you can set the idle timeout it is by default five minutes you can change it according to your need according to your security policy uh, we will not touch the wi-fi settings password policy is an important thing you can set your own criteria to what is the length of the password are you using um specific characters are you using uppercase lowercase numbers and so on and the password expiration and do you allow uh, password reuse all right another thing that you can do is to play around with the theme of your 48 firewall let's just change that to neutrino and it looks much better at least in my opinion you can work in a profile based mode or a policy based mode the default mode is policy based mode so let's just change that to policy based mode and let's just move over we will not uh, use our email service our smtp server so we will keep that for now the same the second thing is interfaces. Now here you create the links, the different interfaces on your FortiGate. You can see them over here. You can configure the physical interface and you can also configure virtual interfaces such as VLANs. So let's just create another interface. We already have a LAN interface. Let's edit that interface. Let's name it finance since we are dealing with the finance division. All right, and here the role can be either when DMZ or LAN, or you can set it to undefined. Since it is a local area network, we will use LAN. Now here you actually configure the IP address. That is the IP address of the interface gateway. So everyone that will connect to that gateway will get an IP address from the DHCP server that we will soon configure. So let's just set the IP address to 10.101.1.1 slash 24. So that will be the interface gateway we can create a firewall address object of that local area network so let's just enable that and here we will set the administrative access that is which protocols are allowed on that interface for management so we will just use http and https and we will also use ping now I have already enabled DHCP server. You can set the pool, the number of IP addresses according to your uh, the number of employees. So let's just set it to dot twenty, and we will keep the default gateway the same as the interface IP, the DNS server the same as the system DNS, 
we can actually use more advanced settings. We are not using a relay DHCP server. If we will use one, we can set the IP address here, but we will use the interface as the DHCP server. All right, so let's just see what else. We can add up additional DHCP scopes, DHCP um, options. We will not do that for now. And we can control the IP address assignment so we can reserve an IP address for specific MAC addresses. We can also block specific MAC addresses from getting uh, IP addresses. And we can only assign IP addresses to specific MAC addresses. All right, we will not use that. You can see that you have an implicit rule at the end here that actually tells your interface to assign IP addresses to unknown MAC addresses. So any MAC address that or any client that will connect will get an IP address. You can play around with that if you want to uh, keep that interface for specific MAC addresses. Now, you can enable device detection. That way, your FortiGate will use different algorithms to recognize which devices are actually moving through uh, that interface, uh, either Windows device, Android devices, Mac devices. Uh, it does so using the MAC address, the 24 first bits of that MAC address. It does so using a user agent. It does so using different algorithms. You can also enable a captive portal for that specific interface. Now, if you will use a captive portal, you will need to create a users and user groups. So let's just disable that and we will soon enable that with a user group that we will create for those finance employees. All right, so let's just click OK. Now, let's assume that we have outsourced employees that work um, in the finance division, but we do not want them to, to be on the same physical interface. We want to divide them to a specific virtual interface. To do so, we we'll use the Create New Interface. And now let's name our uh, VLAN Finance Outsource. Let's set the interface to finance. We are creating actually a virtual interface on the physical interface. Let's set the VLAN ID to 10 and let's set the IP address to um, 10.1.102.1 and we will also create an address object for that subnet. Administrative access will be HTTP and HTTPS. We will use DHCP with uh, fewer IP addresses. So let's just set it to .15. Uh, if we want to be more strict, we can bind MAC addresses to specific IPs. And we can also just right click and we can also block unknown MAC addresses. So that's the way that you can assign or block different MAC addresses from connecting to that interface. We will not do so. Uh, we will set device detection, of course, and let's just make that okay. The next thing is to create a user group for that finance division and let's set the member let's create a new member uh, local user for now let's just name it all right so we have one local user in our finance group not now so let's just move again to network interfaces, finance, edit, and let's just enable our captive portal. We will use a local portal and we will restrict it to the finance group. 
we do not need to exempt sources um, although we could do this do so if we have printers or any other device that just cannot um, enter the credentials okay the third thing that we will need to do is to create a static route and the static route we already have one here actually tells our 48 that anyone who wishes to go out that is the default route will do so uh, through that gateway address which is my WAN interface all right the last thing is policy and objects file with policy create new and let's just name that finance out incoming interface is our finance now we can also do that for our vlan employees so if you need to create a firewall policy for those employees that will connect to the finest vlan you will need to create another firewall policy outgoing interface is when now we can use the uh, address objects that we have actually created that will be our source that is the address object of that lan interface and the destination will be all we can of course restrict it to different user groups but we have already done so using the captive portal all right now scheduling is always service in our case will be all all right now as you can see what is uh what we have here is the central net is enabled i will disable central net since usually at least in small organization we do not use central net if you're a big organization and you're using different net options within different interface you will use central net here you will decide which security profiles would you like to enable on your traffic and let's just apply that now let's create another firewall policy for our finance outsource employees now incoming interface is the finance out that is the villain interface that we have created the outgoing stays the same it is the when interface now as to source we will use the uh, finance out address the address object that we have used destination is all schedule is always service is all and of course you can apply which security profile that you're interested all right so let's set a basic configuration on my 40 gate running 40 os 7 the first thing that i will do is to configure the idle timeout to 30 minutes and i'll set an admin password scope of a minimum eight characters uh, for creating an admin password let's apply that and let's move to administrators let's create a new administrator name it admin2 and let's set the password now if i'll use a uh, six uh, characters only it will pop up and tell me that it must contain eight characters uh, following the password scope all right now let's set the profile itself to super admin let's uh, click ok now if i'll move again and edit the new admin i can now edit it on my cli on the right pane so let's just set another two-factor authentication method which is email so let's set two-factor email and let's set email to let's just use 48 guru gmail.com all right so that's for the administrator now if i'll use the two-factor authentication let's just do okay so we will refresh the page there it is 
And now you can see that I have a new method, which is an email-based two-factor authentication. All right, so let's move to a uh, network. Let's create our interface. Let's create a new interface, which will be the finance interface. By the way, when you press those three lines, you can actually eliminate the menu so you can have a full screen page. So let's set the alias finance role LAN. Let's use HTTPS. Let's also use ping. And let's use an IP address of 10.0.5.1 slash 24. And I will use DHCP server, but I will only use about 54. So I'll have about 50 IP addresses, which is quite enough. Uh, nothing on the advanced DHCP uh, mode, no additional DHCP options. Device detection is enabled, which is a good thing. Traffic shaping, we will soon configure traffic shaping. Okay. Now let's create uh, a user group for those uh, finance users. So let's move to users and let's create a user group, create new, let's name it finance. And sorry for that and let's add them from a remote server which is my radio server and i have already created a group there so i'll just name that finance and that's about it so the next thing to do is to create the firewall policy let's name the firewall policy finance out and the incoming interface is our finance, our outgoing is our when interface, source will be our finance group and all. Destination, also they can uh, actually um, go anywhere they wish, schedule is always, service is all. We will uh, not use uh, proxy based, we will use flow based. All right, so let's just save it and let's create some security profiles. We will disable any exe files from getting into or out from that interface. So let's use the block exe and let's create a new exe filter. We will use all protocols that are available. We will use both uh, directions and let's just use the exe and there it is and we will block it from our interface okay so let's just add it up to our firewall policy and let's use it block exe okay all right, now let's create our static route network, static route. Let's create a new one. All right, and let's create a VIP object. Before that, we will create a new DMZ interface, let's name it DMZ. The role is DMZ 10.0.6.1 slash 24. With no DHCP server, we can only, uh, let's uh, only administrate it using ping to check connectivity. All right, and let's create our VIP server. So let's create a new virtual IP. Let's name it server. And there, let's use a fake uh, external IP and let's map it to our server 10.0.6.7. Okay, now one of the nicest things is that you can actually create the firewall policy directly from that object. So right click on it, create firewall policy and let's server in and the incoming interface is our when interface the outgoing is our dmz 
source is all and destination is our server let's let's use only http and https as our services now we don't need net all right The last thing that we will do is to set up a new video filter and let's, uh, let's block my channel. So let's block 40 tip, don't do it, but in case you need to block uh, a specific uh, YouTube channel, then use the channel override. Let's paste the channel ID and let's block it. Now, if you'll move to file your firewall policy, you will see that you do not see the video filter. It only works on proxy mode and using deep SSL inspection. So use proxy mode and use deep SSL inspection if you need to block uh, specific YouTube channels or restrict Vimeo sites from mature content.